Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you how I figured out that this O2 sensor is bad on my car. So to start with, I changed out the ignition coils because my car was misfiring and throwing a bunch of random codes, mostly mixture codes and misfire codes. So I actually have lifetime warranty on my coils, got those replaced for free, and I had a set of spare spark plugs that were known to be good. I changed them for maintenance. I tossed those in and no difference. The car ran the same. But what I noticed when I pulled the plugs out is the first three were fine, they were clean, and they looked normal. The last three, bank two, were really rich. So considering one bank was fine, one bank was rich, that kind of indicated that you have a mismatch of reading. So I bought that O2 sensor without even connecting my laptop yet, but I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when your car does have a bad O2 sensor, how it will run, and what to expect. So we'll start the car now. Now something to consider, when your car is cold, the oxygen sensors are disregarded. They take about 30 seconds to warm up with a built-in heater. So um, it's called open loop when you first start it. It'll eventually go to closed loop when it's reusing the oxygen sensors to figure out the proper air fuel mixture. But I'm gonna start the car up and show you what happens. So the car's too cold. It's disregarding the oxygen sensors, but it's going to warm up and it's going to switch over to closed loop and start referencing the oxygen sensor and you'll see how the car runs here. But all feels well right now. It'll be pretty obvious when the car goes to closed loop. The reason the cars are designed this way is oxygen sensors don't start working until they're warm and they actually have a built-in heater. But eventually, um, you can't get a perfect air fuel mixture unless you reference the oxygen sensor. It can only just guess and reference inbuilt tables in the ECU to where the air fuel ratio should be. So you can't really see it in the RPM needle yet, but it's starting to run a little choppy, a little rough. Eventually the spark plugs are going to get so fouled out that it can't even run properly and you'll see that bounce all around and drop to about 500 rpm you can see it's smoky it's pig rich right now it's super rich it's even hard to breathe back here so it's in full-blown misfire mode right now but not enough to trip a check engine light yet but it's very choppy you can see the rpm needle moving up and down That just goes to show how rough it's running and also how rich it is. You can see the black soot on the ground. Now I'm gonna show you guys something. So as you can see, I'm reading the, the code. So originally when I, when I was driving home and the car started doing this, it actually did it after a cold start, but it was only giving me misfire codes and mixture codes, um, but nothing relating to oxygen sensor. Only now that I've started the car stone cold, um, is it giving me these codes. But I also disconnected the sensor to do some testing, so that could be why that's there. What you may find is all you have is random misfire codes, primarily on the bank with the bad oxygen sensor, and you'll have uh, mixture codes, but nothing pertaining to the exact oxygen sensor. I don't think any of these are there because uh, the sensor was showing it's bad, it's because I disconnected it in testing. But I wanna show you guys something. So what I want to show you is when you clear your check engine lights, even though I don't have one lit up on the dash, I have uh, pending codes. But if I were to clear them, the car will go open loop for a split second because it's running. It's going to disregard the oxygen sensors just for a minute, not even, just for seconds. And then it's going to go back to referencing them if you do it while the car is running. That's a good way to confirm if you have a bad oxygen sensor because you're forcing open loop. So I'm going to show you right here. I'm going to click clear. You'll see how the car runs 
smooths right out. And then it's like, wait, okay, I'm warm. Let's go back to referencing the sensor. Boom, it's bad. I'll show you again. Clear. Smooths out. And then boom, it goes back to rough because it goes back to referencing the oxygen sensors. So that's a really easy way to determine if you could have a bad oxygen sensor. It's not a definitive answer because you could have something going on with your uh, map sensor, etc. Anything that would force an open loop situation will cause the car to run smooth. And I'll demonstrate that right now. I'm going to force an open loop situation by disconnecting the oxygen sensor right now. It's like the problem went away as soon as I did that because it can't reference the oxygen sensors anymore. It, it just has to go back to the ECU and run off a preset value, which would actually be kind of rich and your car would get terrible fuel economy if you left it this way. It'll at least get you home, worst case. We're gonna verify the functionality of these oxygen sensors in INPA just to see how the how they report back so you guys can know what to expect. I'm also gonna pull the spark plugs out and put my original ones back in after cleaning them once we've changed the sensor so you can see how rich one bank is. And like I said before, the reason I showed any type of oxygen sensor codes stored in the DME was because I had that disconnected in testing. Otherwise, all I would have at this point is misfires and mixture codes. Nothing to clearly indicate that uh, there's a problem with the oxygen sensor or which one if any I just figured it out because I've changed my bank one sensor Right when I first got the car Because I was trying to chase down some issues. I was having with bad fuel injectors So I changed that out realized it wasn't the cause But that one is newer and the back one is probably original to the car That's why I kind of leaned toward that one anyway when I pulled the plugs out It was very clear because Three of them were really rich and looked rough. The front three looked fine. So let's get set up with the laptop now and take a look at the values coming from these oxygen sensors. Got my laptop set up now. We're gonna open up INPA. Choose our chassis. Go into engine. We're gonna go into status and then F6. We have our voltages. Bank two, before the CAD. Bank one, before the CAD. Bank one after the CAD, bank two after the CAD. So these should be similar. We're gonna start the car up now and see what they look like. Two is about normal. That's reading three. These are similar, that looks good. This should be around two volts right now, but it's all over the place. Exactly what I wanted to see considering I already bought the sensor. <laughs> That's fine, way rich. So if you're gonna be testing, if you have input set up, I'm gonna put a link in the description on how to set this up. If you're gonna be testing, if one is looking good, the other should match. These should be similar. We have big variances. We got two and three. Thumbs off. It thinks that it needs more fuel than it really does. So this definitely confirms that I got a bad O2 sensor, bank one before the CAD. So I'm gonna shut the car off now, change out the sensor, change out my plugs, and we'll start it back up and see how it runs after that and verify what the signals look like. So to start, we're gonna pull all the spark plugs out because I'm going to put the cleaned up plugs back in and we won't start the car until I've already changed out the oxygen sensor. There's a normal looking spark plug from bank one. Let's contrast it to bank two now. Look at bank two. You can even see all the soot coming off. Whereas one has nothing coming off. 
Now just to compare, we'll go to cylinder two, bank one, it should be clean. Now we'll go to cylinder five, bank two, black. Cylinder three, bank one, clean. Cylinder six, bank two, black. So you got three that are clean, three that are black. If you have that, and you don't even want to do any testing with your laptop, etc., or a scan tool, that's a pretty in clear indicator that one of the primary O2 sensors is not reading right. So I'm gonna put clean plugs in there, reassemble the coils, and we'll go underneath the car and change out the O2 sensor. All right, so our spark plugs are back in. Let's disconnect this harness here. If you guys were wondering, I was just disconnecting it off of this plate here. It gets clipped in there and back there. Same places where your blue solenoids are cable managed. So now I just got this hanging here. We'll go underneath the car now. I have the new one here. I'm gonna actually route it in place now. We'll have to remove the under tray. To be able to access the area where we have to remove the O2 sensor, we need to pull the steering rack forward. To do so, you're gonna need a 16 mil wrench on top of uh, the bolt right here. There's a nut on the other side of this. and an E12 socket. We're gonna do the same on this side here. Now we'll just pull forward on the rack. Now we have clear access. So looking up in there you can see we're going after this sensor right here. Not this one, the one behind it. I have the following O2 sensor tool, which I'd recommend you guys purchase. I had to remove that just because of space constraints. There's the old sensor out.
All right, gonna give it a first start with the new sensor. Pay attention to these values. So this is what you want to look for with healthy O2 sensors. If anything, they should be running similar. Bank 1, Bank 2 should be targeting a similar amount of air and fuel. So they should be very close, 2 and 2. And the downstreams are very similar as well. These are uh, narrow band, these are wide band. So they go between 0 and 5 volts. These go between 0 and 1 volt. So I'm going to give it uh, some gas so you can pay attention to what happens with these values. As you can see here, they're all running relatively even and smooth. Nice balance. Playing nice and smooth. And it should be in closed loop right now. We'll be able to hear when the engine changes idle. It'll stop the warm-up procedure. There'll be less of a tick sound coming from the motor when the high-pressure fuel pump actually reduces the amount of pressure it's making. That's where that sound comes from, FYI. If you guys are wondering why the, there's such a loud tick on these motors from under the intake manifold, that's your high-pressure fuel pump making a lot of noise. But when it warms up, it cuts the amount of pressure and it goes nice and quiet. You'll notice here in a second. I can hear it changing. It's about to prep. Right there. You notice that difference? It went quiet. And then you'll hear the exhaust flaps open around the back. I can breathe now back here. As you can see, no smoke. That's so much crap came out of it from before. Idling nice and smooth. So that fixed the problem. I once had someone ask me uh, if I could talk a little bit about the N54 tick and why some cars are very loud. Um, I would say it's probably your high pressure fuel pump, just to put that out there since I summarized what that noise is. Mine's relatively quiet for an N54. I've heard others that are louder, but it's probably the pressure relief valve in the high pressure fuel pump that's a little bit noisy, which um, shouldn't be there when the car's warmed up. So that shows you what to expect if your O2 sensor fails on pretty much any car. Uh, that's probably how it will fail. It will read lean and give too much fuel, more fuel than needed. I'm going to put a link in the description as to where you can buy an oxygen sensor for this car. I'm going to put the primary and secondary O2 sensors and bank one, bank two. Uh, you're going to probably want to do them together. I really should have way back then. Uh, but anyway, uh, it made a good video now. So uh, if you got more than 150,000 miles, change out your Bank 1, Bank 2, O2 sensors. It'll, it may help with fuel economy anyway. That had 190,000 miles on it, probably that sensor. So you can't really complain. It did its job as far as I could tell. So thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. I upload regularly.